Hello, I'm Maria Ressa, and this is Hashtag Why Mining. Please use the hashtag when you join the conversation. We are honored to have with us today anti-mining advocate and environmentalist Gina Lopez. Gina will talk about her insights into the new Executive Order 79, also called the Mining EO. Gina, it's good to have you here. Thank Thanks you for, for having coming me, by. Maria. Um, tell me, what was your reaction to this EO 79? Uh, mixed, mixed, yeah. Well, one, I was really happy, elated actually that he put certain areas as no-go. Uh, I, I think that's a great achievement. Agricultural areas, ecotourism areas, island ecosystem, that's a major achievement. And you were campaigning for that, really. You were, yeah, you were advocating yeah, for that right. for a long time. Yeah. Very uh, strong voice <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were actually nearing 7 million, so we're closing up on that to, to thank the 7 million and to... Yeah, I guess my greatest um, thing there on the no go zones. Yeah, is the the issue but of really uh, have to say this honoring when, uh, existing contracts, and then the wonder if that if these existing contracts are happening on these yeah, no go zones, then when push comes to show, uh, what takes precedence? So I actually talked to layer just surrender just for coming here so I don't say anything which is not the truth no? sure he, he I actually feel a little better because he assured me that uh, usually even if there's an existing contract there's an existing contract that we call we call it an MPSA right for exploration right but before that proceeds further there has to be evaluation and that's where the EO can kick in which means that even if there's an existing contract if upon evaluation uh, this contract is seen to be in areas which are no-go then it looks like it won't happen so what, so what is see. your if you had if you were the one crafting it what is your vision for if I mining? was the one crafting yeah it, I'm, I'm curious I would make a non-negotiable stand towards people's welfare and 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 when there's a decision to be made that's non-negotiable if there's an existing contract and that existing contract clearly violates the well-being of farmers and fishermen in the community but there's no doubt about it i mean i would take the farmer's side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anytime you know the, the the betterment of the community and actually that's sana what i was hoping for you know rather than a commitment to paper why not a commitment to the welfare of the people i mean because if we're really rigid about this some laws and regulations uh, upon implementation don't render benefit to the people and so we yeah for me for me the thing that is vital is the common good but isn't, I mean, some, some people would say that this EO actually did take the common good, trying to find a balance with sustainable well, development. Well, you know, like, I guess what I was saying, like, for example, when, uh, what's his name, uh, Mon Pae was, we yes. were, he was asked uh, whether, for example, in the case of Tampakan, yes. I, you know, because I think ab about a few months ago, uh, the Davao Irrigators Association came to my office representing 31,000 farmers and they were really worried about Tampakan because they were saying that if the, or the ores are being processed in their area mm -hmm. uh, and the need of water for mm -hmm. mineral processing is much greater than agriculture so they were worried what's going to happen to our farmlands I uh, and then when Mon said that oh you know but we have to honor that commitment so then you know um, I, I guess I get worried when the commitment and the impulse seems to be more to honor a contract uh, then to say, but if this contract goes against the welfare of people, then we, we have to evaluate. The pro-mining guys um, say that the, the sus agriculture and mining tend to not go together anyway, totally that they're not no, in the same. Absolutely. So you disagree with that? Oh, yes. How can you? Because when you mine, uh, you put at risk water. You, mm -hmm. you really do. I mean, I'm not just conjecturing. It's reality. Mm -hmm. You go everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you put at risk water, you put at risk agriculture. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is it worth the risk? Now, according to yeah, is it um, worth the Leo, risk? Leo Gisarena, you know, yeah. MGB head, he told me, Gina, food security will always take precedence. Mm -hmm. Now, that really makes me feel a little bit calmer. That means upon evaluation, if there is food security, there is no way they will threaten food security. So mm -hmm. I think if the government stand is like this, if it's food security, there's mm -hmm. no way it will go on, then I think we're kind of on safe ground. Do you think sustainable mining is possible? I think, you know, I mean, look at, Australia and, yeah. and, and look at Canada, they, they've been able to, I mean, I heard that there are mine sites that have been converted into forests and things like that. I, I, again, it's just the way mining is done in this country. Okay. The poorest areas in the country are mining areas. Mm -hmm. And the countries that do horrible mining here, 
behave in their country why is this like that so there's a I, I feel that in this country we have a real serious problem with governance mm -hmm. you know because as long as people can take the bribe yes. and as long as gov local government officials will think of their pockets rather than welfare of the mm -hmm. people I mean you can put whatever law is there you will just it will just get discombobulated because unless we address the issue of governance. Yes. That's do you, so do you think that this EO addresses some of those Well, you have an issues. MICC, you yes. know, that mineral mining uh, thing. And, and, uh, and I, I had asked Leo, are the environmental NGOs part of that? Yes. Uh, and he said yes. Yes. So if, if that works, that's very, very key. You know, if you have a governing body which is not just made up of which has not been compromised, yes. but which has really committed to seeing the welfare of the people who are actually in a very good place. One of the other clauses in, in the EO talks about supremacy of uh, the primacy of national government over I know, regional. How, can, yeah. how, did you, how do you react to that? No, Is I that really good or, or No, or not bad? good. In what sense? Why? Well, because if, like, uh, and, and I, if, if, for example, the local governments or uh, uh, like municipalities want yes. to go agriculture yes. and ecotourism, what right does national government and big business have to bully their way into how they should live? They're the ones going to suffer. What right do you have to do that? But uh, again, according, if, if that was going to be done like that, but uh, according to uh, Leo, uh, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's all an issue of governance. If national government is not going to act like a bully and is really going to see people's welfare, I think we're in a really good place. And I think that uh, 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 President Noy Noy no, is actually going in the right direction. I mean, he said no new mining in Palawan. Yes, moratorium on, uh, and yeah. Palawan is one of the island ecosystems that have been, that, that's one of yeah. the interesting things, tourism you know, areas, yeah. island ecosystems. I remember you were one of the people really yeah, pushing yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. can't mine in Palawan, my God. I mean, I want to say one thing, you know sure. where, where where the EO is short and where, where? and other executives all agree with me, it's the money. They, everyone agrees they're not paying enough money uh, to the national government and the reality is with the EO is that they're not really going to get money with the EO because you can't get my I mean the the existing mining companies are not going to pay more unless it passes through Congress right hello you know you know how Congress works here it takes forever there's so an existing there's something there's some a case that's been filed in front of the Supreme Court though that may look at this right looking at, at the law yeah but what I'm trying to say is that uh, if, if, if they're not paying enough money they're not going to pay money until it passes through Congress, and that takes forever. You know, so when are they going to pay more money for the use of our resources? Because that's where, that that's what they really didn't want to do. The mining companies pay more money, and it looks like they've won that part of the battle because they're not going to pay more money unless it passes through Congress, and that's going to take a lot of time. No? So I think that's a weakness in the EO. Um, uh, let me throw a question for you from social media. It's from at Milken C. What will happen to South Cotabato's ban on open pit mining? There's a conflict between local government code and the EO. What happens in situations like that? Um, well, with um, uh, Mon Pai said right now that local ordinance stands. And then in the same breath, he said that uh, national government, we has to honor existing contracts. Uh, I, I, I feel that, I, I guess there will be some kind of discussion so it like it doesn't look like there's a firm stand that has been made that they're gonna rape South Cabato anyway and I, I talked to uh, Secretary Prosi Alcala and because there's been a commitment to food security mm -hmm. and to agricultural land and I feel that if it can be proven that the area that's gonna be mined is actually vital for the food security of that area I, I really don't see how they would uh, risk that so uh, we actually have science and data on on our side no? yes so. but what you're actually saying because sometimes it's been portrayed that you're out for a total mining ban what you're saying is governance uh is a needs Vital. to be addressed and yeah. and that uh sustainable mining is is a possibility it's possible would you say that? um i would say that there are certain areas in the country uh, where any kind of mining can never ever be responsible like island ecosystems right. where there are mangroves and coral reefs right. and farmlands there's no way you can do any kind of mining there tourism and agriculture is good now if there's an area in the country where they find that there's no we're not putting the ecological systems at risk and there's good governance why not no 
if, 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 if they can find such a place. Yeah. Some interest. Well, this is a, a question from from what you were actually talking about. At Alex Strike Four asks, do miners pay tax? They don't na nga eh. <laughs> They do pay. <laughs> Two percent <laughs> excise. Yes, correct. Two percent excise, and they're not gonna pay more unless it passes through Congress. So that's the issue here. They're coming in, mm -hmm. taking our amazing natural resources and then bringing it out and paying us 2% excise. Hello? You know? Yes, yes. It's that's pretty uh, that's pretty much, people pretty much agree on this, right? Yeah. That, the, that the mining companies are paying they too agree, little They agree, and we agree. But that issue has not been addressed in the EO. Because even if they say they're going to pay 5% more, they're not going to pay that unless it passes through Congress. So where it's like an issue that's been left hanging. Yes, but that yeah. well, let's let's talk some facts. Um, the Philippines has is the fifth largest in the world in terms of mineral resources. Yeah. Uh, number two in terms of copper. Number three in terms of gold. Yeah. Is that, that and then and in terms of of money paid by companies to the government, most everyone, both both the mining yeah, companies and the enough. and yeah. the anti mining advocates say that that these that they're not paid enough. Yeah. But the mining companies also say that. Part of the problem is is not them as much as it is small scale mining. No, do you agree? That's not you disagree? True. Okay. I have pictures and pictures and pictures here of, 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 of large scale mining that has done great great harm. In fact, the the seven grossly badly uh, mine sites in the country. What do they call it? The dirty seven are all large scale mining. Large scale mining has the ability to wreak massive large scale havoc. Uh, that's that's not true at all. And uh, up to now, the havoc that they've done in this country has not been remedied. You know, like Marinduque, mm -hmm. Samar, Benguet. I mean, there's sites there which I is remember Marinduque was oh, smart copper in 1987. It's still bad. I mean, no? they're and still suffering. Rivers are still disadvantaged. And that hasn't been addressed. They just went and left. That's so not true. That's not true at all. Um, yeah. So another question. Um, this does Gina, this is from at Joel De Jesus, does Gina and the other advocates, anti-mining advocates, have anything to say about people losing jobs and increased Philippine import expenses? I, I'm assuming this has to do with if we don't um, actually do the mining ourselves, we'll have to import them, we'll have to import the minerals. We'll have what to import, have to say? No, they, the, the minerals are taken from here yes. and they're used to make TV sets or whatever. And then I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't, the, the, the fact of getting the minerals from here doesn't decrease the amount of money I pay for a TV set. It's still the same. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. The spoons, the forks, everything, it's still the same. We're, we're not on a leverage thing because the minerals are coming from us. We still pay the same profit. So we're not... Um, but you know, if uh, the Alternative Mining Act, which is being proposed in Congress, uh, also includes that should mining operations stop, the, the people that are in the mining sector and, an earn, and are earning money, uh, will be taken care of. Interesting. Yeah. Um, there was another another clause inside the EO seventy nine that that um, said s sulfur using mercury. Mercury. Yes. So bad. What do you make of that? Is yeah, that you something use you mercury campaign to for? get gold? You screw up the river systems. It's really bad. That's small scale mining. S small. And yeah. this is something you also campaigned against, right? Is that? Ah, yeah. Because I mean, Sibuyan. You know, we're investing there. Yes. So I invite everyone out there. You must, do I do it here? So yeah, I tell them, sure. come to sure. Sibuyan. <laughs> <laughs> and then come to Brooks Point, it's just really, really beautiful. Sibuyan is this amazing place with the world's densest forest, the country's cleanest inland body of water, and the people there are really poor. You know why you can't go there. <laughs> so the biggest problem in our country, if we talk about resources, is that it's access. You can't go there. Like to go to Sibuyan, you have to go by row row. It takes 18 hours. So we're addressing that. So by next year, summer, I'm inviting you all there. You're going to have the time of your lives. <laughs> and we're going to eradicate poverty there. Just two years. Just give us time.